We all have a mission and a message that we want to share. And we know that we want to hold space for people so they can be seen, valued, and heard. I am going to pivot this over to Carolyn. She is going to share with us mindful marketing for your community. We're going to talk a little bit about her experience with leading her own community, which I'm a member of, which is amazing. Today is really about how do you share your message mindfully. So Carolyn, I'll let you tell the rest. Awesome intro. <laughs> I am a social marketing nerd. I started my company, Bad X Enterprises, in 2015. I love business owners. I love communities. That is where my heart is. Grew up with two parents who owned their own businesses. So in my mind, that was the only logical path forward, right? Love the flexibility, bringing people together, all of that stuff. Bad X Enterprises is a social marketing company. And my focus is organic growth that is mindful, right? Like mental health positive social media use, because we know how detrimental social media and the internet can be to how our brains function just on a functional level, right? Not even to talk about emotional damage and everything else. So with social marketing and your community, you want your community, no matter what, to be a healthy space, right? You want people to go there, whether you're for wellness, whether you're focused on something else, whatever, you want people to go to your community to be supported in some way, and you want them to go there with healthy behaviors. You don't really want necessarily, I'm just making vast assumptions about everybody here, but you probably don't want the angry basement dwelling keyboard warriors who are online all day, very upset about everything. That's not healthy in any community, right? Even for them, like they should be doing other things to support their mental health. So how do you mindfully send the message, spread the word about your community in a way that's still really supportive of not only your mental health, but your potential members, right? Like you don't want to be encouraging people to be constantly plugged in. So super brief, obviously, I could talk about this forever because I love communities. <laughs> These are the number top three things that you should be doing to develop a really mindful strategy, whether it's for your community, for your brand in general. These are going to be fairly universal. Okay, so first... Deb kind of touched on this a little bit. You have to know who your members are. You have to know who your ideal client is and you have to do your homework before you start doing any sort of community building, planning for marketing, any of that. You have to be really real with yourself. And sometimes it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a, a soul journey <laughs> to be realistic about who you're working with. So I've worked with a lot of different clients across a lot of different industries for marketing strategy. And I've had several different instances where a client is completely convinced that they're going to work with this type of person when in actuality, their products and services are aligned to somebody who's very different and they don't want to admit that or make changes, right? They're like, nope, this is how I want to talk about my brand. This is what I want to do. I'm like, then you are consistently going to attract the wrong person. So for some people, it's harder to let go of preconceived notions they have about who needs them, who needs their community, who's going to engage and who's going to go through it. The best way to do that, as Deb will tell you, and she's very skilled at doing this, is to ask people. <laughs> you have to do homework, interview potential clients, interview potential members, know kind of what the transformation is that your community will offer think backwards about, okay, who would want to undergo that transformation or engage in that sort of growth, and then find those types of people and ask them. And if you keep getting negative response or like, they're like, oh yeah, that I wouldn't really need that. Adjust the sample, adjust the audience and keep going until you find who your ideal client is. That's before you do any marketing work. You have to know the people because that's what the community is made of. We don't care about the content. It's about the people. And if the right people aren't there, <laughs> it's going to be no fun and a problem. So the second tip I have for you today for mindful marketing of your community is to plan content that provides value. And that's like such a marketing buzz phrase. 
And so not only does it provide value, this is where it gets very magical for your community. That models the behavior that you want within your community. So we'll use my, my community as kind of a case study for this. So I'm a social marketing nerd. Most of my social media presence is about different social marketing strategies and tactics. I'm always asking questions. I'm always asking people to weigh in, to send me messages, to tell me a story about that specific topic that I'm sharing. Those are things when people get into my community, which is called Bad Axe Biz Club. When people get in there, they it's not optional. They have to do that to participate. They've already been primed to know like, hey, Carolyn's going to listen if she asks for feedback about something or if she wants to hear our biggest struggle, she's gonna weigh in right away. One of the first things you do when you join my community is you're asked, what is your current biggest marketing struggle? And when you answer that, I'm immediately either sharing a link to one of my YouTube videos or a resource that I know about. I'm replying to that because I want that first interaction that people have within the community to be a reward for the behavior I've already modeled on social media, right? Replying to me, telling me what's going on in their lives, being vulnerable, as soon as they're in the community and they interact with the behavior we've modeled on social media, I want them to get a reward. I want them to have a solution right away. It doesn't always work, but sometimes, most of the time, it does. And they then know, like, right, okay, so they've been commenting, replying, maybe we've had a few messages. I'm like, hey, you should join Biz Club. It's free, it's neat, and there's a lot of resources for you there. They join they have a, a struggle that they share, they immediately get that little benefit, right? Right away. The third piece, if you're figuring out, you know, I have my content figured out, I know who my ideal client is, I know what's gonna happen within the community. So what's that external marketing piece? Where should I show up? Obviously, when you have your ideal client defined, it's easier to figure out where they are online. So where to show up, but I would always suggest to pick platforms to focus on that have a longer lifespan for your content. Community is not something that happens in a day or two days. It takes a very long time to build. If you're committing to building a community, you're committing to the long haul, right? So if you say, make a few Facebook posts about it, maybe a couple LinkedIn posts, things like that, the lifespan on a social media post is so small, it's like a day or two. Now, if you make a YouTube video that has a really search engine optimized, because YouTube is owned by Google, a very rich title, a very keyword heavy description, and it solves a problem that you're gonna solve even deeper in your community, you will constantly be attracting those people over a much longer lifespan with your content. That's not to say that you shouldn't or don't need an Instagram or Facebook presence or anything like that. Just be aware and be very intentional with where you're putting your most time and effort and resources. Blogs, YouTube, even Pinterest, because it is a search engine, that content has a lot more life than just posting on Instagram or just tweeting. So the three tips that I have for good foundation on being really intentional with your community marketing. For social media marketing, you hear a lot of times it's all about creating content. That could be like a full-time job unless you have a VA that does all that or social media marketer that does that for you. Gary V says po post 100 times a day or if you hear other people that their thing is, if you don't have anything value to say, don't say anything. What do you think from a social media marketing perspective? Are we like, where, what we should be doing? Yeah, so number one, always think analytically, right? A social media platform wants people in it longer, wants people to stay on it longer. That's unhealthy. It's not good for your brain. It's not good for your people's brains. So how can you use it in a way that supports you, supports your end user? For me, 
And for most of my clients, the strategy that I suggest is figure out a frequency that you can be consistent with. So consistent doesn't mean constant. Consistent means if you're like, I know I can have one really amazing post per week that's just really rich with information, with whatever, that's just a really good post, I'm going to do it. If you're like, no, I could do it daily, that cadence feels really good to me, go for it. But just keep in mind, it's for the long haul. And more and more, I'm seeing, you know, Instagram, Facebook, even with the rise of TikTok, video is the content that gets the most love and pushed out the most. So to me, I'm like, if I'm making videos, I'm putting them on YouTube because it's backed by the most powerful search engine. So for starting at the beginning of this year, I've really focused on that as a platform for my business. And it's amazing the level of attraction I've had for, you know, it's not massive. I'm just starting out, but how videos perform well weeks after they're posted and the reach that they get versus an Instagram post that's like maybe two hours of performance, like two hours versus hundreds of hours of performance. To me, I'm like, you know, my time is my investment. Sure, I could hire people to make content for me, but I have to interact on that content. No one is me. No one knows my business as well as I do. So I'm still going to have to go in. If I have a VA posting for me every single day, I'm still going to have to check in every day. No, thank you. Knowing what you want, the amount of time you want to spend on social media, like physically spend on it. Because even if you schedule posts in advance, you need to see if there was a comment. Check in on those things. Know how long you want to spend. Be really real with it. One thing I do is I grid out 24 boxes on a piece of paper. And then I color in like, okay, you know, it's representing the 24 hours in a day. I need to spend eight hours sleeping. I probably spend two to three hours eating. I want to hang out with my kids for this long and I want to knit for this long. And then, you know, you kind of work in and be like, okay, my working hours are these. How much of that time do I want to spend with clients? How much do I want to spend on social media? I view it more as like the human perspective, right? Sure, posting it a hundred times a day probably would result in a lot of followers. But those are followers that are going to demand constant attention from you. And that's not, <laughs> that's not what you want. So I hope that answers the question. Thank you so much, Caroline. What amazing tips. There are so many people creating content just for creating content's sake instead of why content is it, the purpose of it and with the thought behind it. <laughs> so I think that a lot of people don't well, take that time. You end up working against yourself too. Yeah. When, when you are just creating content to create content, you're wasting your own time. You're wasting people's time. They're not going to view you as important or high value because you're just putting garbage out. Whole soapbox, but yeah. I'll end on that. Carolyn's in the FineCom community. So all the members that are here in the FineCom community, please connect with Carolyn in our space there. Ask her follow-up questions after this event inside there. And Carolyn is going to be hosting a live interview with us for the Community Strategy Podcast coming up 